What does this button do? Oh, this button. Oh, this one. Hey, it's Shannon May, and today we're going to go through a brief overview of the Live 2D interface. So let's open up Live 2D and go through the panels on the screen. Up here is the parts window. This will contain all of the folders with your model's parts inside, which can be imported via a PSD file or added separately. We'll be covering imports in a separate video, but yeah, here's where they'll be. If you click the little tab here, the parts window will change to the project window. This window contains the references for the files which contain your parts. You can see here, I have a folder with my source image, which is my PSD, and a second folder called model guide image, which contains guides that I lay over the top of my model to help me pose difficult angles or expressions. Now let's go down to the bottom left, to the deformer window. Deformers are one of the backbones of Live 2D puppet animation and allow you to move around your parts as groups and deform them. I'll go into more depth on this window in another video because deformer hierarchies are pretty important to your model. You can click on the tab at the top here to get to the log window. You won't be making much use of this if everything's working, but it can be very useful for debugging if something goes wrong. Next, we have the tool details window. I usually have this quite small as it contains the settings of your selected tool, which you won't often have to change. I have mine set as default, but you might find changing things up helps you. Below that, we have the inspector. Now, this window reacts differently depending on what we have selected elsewhere. If I select this part here, you'll notice the inspector window now contains options for that part. Let's explore them. Name, that's pretty self-explanatory. ID, this is unique for every part, even if something is named the same. Part denotes which part folder the piece is in. Deformer denotes which deformer, in order to deform and move the part, is assigned to the part. Clipping ID is used to clip one part to another, so that the part cannot be seen if it's not inside another part. This is really useful for things like clipping eyeballs inside eye whites, or clipping shadows to their respective parts. Invert mask changes the behaviour of the clipping ID to the opposite. Draw order sets the order in which the parts are drawn on the screen. The higher the number, the further forward the part will be. By default, parts will follow the layer order you set up in your PSD, but it's good practice to also set up your draw order correctly to avoid draw issues down the line if you're doing complex animations. Opacity changes how much you can see a part and can even make the part disappear. Blend mode works the same way as it does in most drawing programs, but Live2D currently only supports multiply and additive. As a general rule, multiply will darken and additive will lighten. Culling is the concept of when you can't see something, it's not there, which kind of seems obvious, but if you overlap a part on itself as part of an animation, checking the culling box will make the behind part that you can't see cease to exist. For models with a lot of moving parts and heavy deformation, checking this box can help to stop model lag if that becomes a problem. The vertices info section is activated when you click on a specific vertex on your model's mesh so that you can see the exact X and Y coordinates of that vertex and can modify if needed. The inspector changes, however, depending on what you have selected, and you can also select warp and rotation deformers. The additional settings you'll get for rotation deformers are angle, freeze angle, and scale. And for warp deformers, you'll be able to change the number of divisions and thus how large or small you want your deformations to be. Let's go down a little bit and look at the parameter window. This is something we'll explore in more detail in another video as, like deformers, it really needs its own separate explanation. 
But the basics of it is that you'll be able to create and set new parameters here to make your model move. You'll be able to select specific keyforms, which are each of these little circle nubs here. Make sure you right click them to make sure you've definitely selected a specific keyform, as accidentally editing the wrong one can lead to a lot more work. I know this from experience. The buttons along the top add and delete keyforms, and you can even put your keyforms into their own folders to keep them organized using the little folder button. The trash can will delete the entire selected parameter, not just a keyform, so press it at your peril. Let's have a look at the toolbar at the top. Firstly, you can choose the Live 2D SDK you're working with. In most cases, you'll just have to set to the latest Live 2D version, but you might have to change it if you're using face tracking software that needs backwards compatibility. Next to that, this drop down goes from model to animation mode. We're going to stick with model mode because, hey, that's kind of what this tutorial is for. Going over here, we have the edit level, which allows you to change the level of deformations you can make. I usually keep this at two. Next is the Edit Texture Atlas button. You'll need a texture atlas for your model, and the program can auto-generate one for you. If we click this, you can see the atlas of my own model here, and you can drag around the parts accordingly. Next is the Manual Mesh Edit button. You'll see the dots and lines that appear when I click my fringe, and that's a mesh. Think of it like I'm wearing a hairnet, and when you grab the net, you move the hair underneath it too. You can draw all of these lines and vertices yourself, or you can click the button next to the manual mesh edit button and create an automatic mesh instead. This has a number of options depending on your needs, and I encourage you to experiment with these to find the mesh settings that suit you. Moving on, these three buttons here are the deformer creation tools, pretty self-explanatory. You use them to create deformers, which we'll be covering in a separate video. To the right of these are the arrow tool, lasso tool, and brush selection tool. These are all tools used to select things in the model pane. Lastly, on this toolbar, there are the final three buttons, deform path, edit glue, and art path tools. These are all tools used in enabling smooth animation and deformation, but all are very context specific We'll be making use of some of them in later videos. Underneath the toolbar, we have the model pane, where you can see and modify your creation. At the top are settings for turning guides on and off, and at the bottom we have several settings bars. Here you can take snapshots of your model to use as guides, you can change the background opacity, zoom level, and can flip the model pane if needed to check your animations are correct. Over to the right, you can test your model's movements with pre-made action sets and record this to take into animation mode, if you're so inclined. The last part down in the right-hand corner is the multi-view options. This isn't something I often use in my workflow. I prefer one big canvas, but this might be better for your workflow, so try it out. And that's about it for the main Live 2D interface. I really hope this video helped, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe if you found this useful. I'll have more videos up shortly, and the next one will be on deformers and parameters, so watch out for it soon. Hope you have a lovely, art-filled day, and goodbye for now.